you know, just to give you a little recap on uh, obviously the Youngstown State game, uh, obviously sitting in here and meeting with our team last night, we're happy to be 1-0. and Our kids did a heck of a job really just finishing the game off. I mean, uh, it's not really how you start, it's how you finish. And you know, as you went back and watched, um, you know, the offense play, the defense play, and the special teams play, you, you obviously pull great things from, from both. There's a lot of positives uh, to come out of it. And as coaches, that's what we do, try to focus on the positives to start off with and then, again, evaluate and, um, and then work on the, the negatives. But, you know, when you look at offensively, uh, you know, any time we go into a football game, we talk about rushing rushing the football. We got to be able to rush football. We rushed for, you know, 325 yards. Um, it was a heck of a day on the ground and we could have had a lot more. Um, again, there's all those attention to details uh, as far as, you know, just getting the right block, being tighter as we pull around on some of our outside runs. And, um, you know, we had like 11 explosive gains and Coach Cheney's always talking about if, and again, we know we've got probably about an 85% chance of winning if we have eight or more and we had 11. So if we continue to have, it, you know, 11 explosive gains, um, you know, we got a great chance to win the game. Um, some of the negative parts of the offense is we still need to sustain more drives. You know, there's too many three and outs or, you know, just not staying on the field and winning that time possession. So, you know, the, the explosive gains, you know, happen. I think, you know, one play, bang, two play, bang, and defense is back on the field, which makes it tough on a defense. Um, and then, you know, having a three and out, we just got to sustain more drives and, and, and pound some defense and, and tire them out. So, uh, you know, a couple of the other little things that we got to focus on is, is, you know, keeping control of the football. You know, we had three turnovers, and, uh, and our defense did a good job, you know, in those situations. However, we can't turn the ball over and give them a short field. They won the field position war, I think, by like 32 yards, and we got to, uh, to get that done as well. Defensively, there was a lot of positives, a lot more than I thought on game day. Um, I guess on game day, I look, I'm going to start off with the negatives, and I'll hit you on the positives because I think there's a lot more positives than negatives. Uh, is that fourth quarter with you know those two big runs or two big plays we gave up in the fourth quarter? Fourth quarter's got to be our best, and um, you know we gave up a, a big pass and a big run. We can't do that. And when you look at it, it's just little details. Um, and uh, when you look at the positives, I mean, I thought the first half was very very solid. Uh, you look at we had five. I thought it was four. We had five sudden change situations. Okay, and I think I briefly mentioned this. I had a pretty good feel of what happened during the game, watching it on the sideline and, and looking at it, but. They had the ball four times across the 50, the 40-yard line, the 37, the 46, and the 9-yard line. They also had it at the 46, which gave them a 54-yard drive. So 50 yards or less five times and came up with six points. Okay, that could have very well been, you know, double-digit points easily. And uh, I thought our defense, you know, uh, stood up to that challenge. And we talk about it all the time. And one of the things you'll notice on a sudden change situation, we gather, gather our defense together to say, hey, this is what we play for, not, you know, so it's what that attitude you take on the, on the field that day. So we practice sudden change. So I'm excited for those guys in that respect, but uh, we can't, uh, you know, we can't give up big plays in the fourth quarter or any time really um, uh, to, to win football games. Um, when you look at offensively and defensively, we had two penalties, which I thought for an opener, usually you're going to have a lot of penalties. Uh, we had one on, uh, I think defense was a PI that was, you know, whatever. And then we had a legal procedure on offense. So for, for the most part, offensively, defensively, special teams, you felt pretty good, uh, or penalties, you felt pretty good. Special teams, we had three penalties there, which, you know, two delays. And, um, you know, we can't have those and we can't burn timeouts. I was glad I had a timeout there at the end, just in the two minute situation uh, where we stopped them. So, um, you know, that's where we are team wise. I'm sure you guys will have some questions from there. As far as the health of our, our football team right now, um, you know, we came out of it, you know, a little bit banged up, uh, to say the least. Um, uh, you know, on Saturday, you know, James came out, James Conner came out, uh, out of the game early in the, in the second quarter. Uh, we thought it was okay. He's jumping around and um, having a lot of fun and enthusiastic and say, Coach, I'm fine. And, uh, but after further evaluation, doctors looked at him um, on Sunday. Um, he's, got a, he's got a knee issue that's going to need repaired. And, uh, you know, we'll probably, I shouldn't say probably will, will. It's hard to, hard to believe. Uh, we'll probably lose him for the season um, with, with an MCL. So, um, you know, nothing that you like to come up here as a coach and, and uh, you just feel, feel awful for him. Guys, you know, there's not a guy that's worked harder than him during camp. I don't think he missed a snap, a play, a practice. Um, you know, I don't think there's anybody hurt more than him. Um, and, uh, you know, just disappointed for him, obviously, and his family. And, you know, it's tough, tough, tough to say. Um, but we got a ton of confidence in the rest of those guys. You saw what, you know, Olison did in the game, you know, rushing for over 200 yards. 
um, you know, highlighted by you know that that sticker on your helmet on on, on game day, college game day. Uh, was excited for him and, and uh, you know Chris James, Darren Hall. Uh, we got a stable backs back there, but you know you talk about stepping up and, and making a play after a guy goes down. Um, so we feel good with where um, where we can go with that, but obviously feel uh, sad for for James and what he's got to go through. It's tough. Our kids will stick with him, uh, and he he will continue to be a big part of our football team in this season. Um, Akron next on deck. You know they they uh, took a feat, defeat to uh, you know top twenty team in Oklahoma out in Oklahoma out in Norman Oklahoma and uh, you know uh, both good football teams. Um, you know Akron uh, is I've watched both sides of the ball just to watch the the new stuff as opposed to last year's stuff that we've been uh, loaded up with. Uh, you know uh, is a good football team uh, defensively. They, you've got you know again very similar to Youngstown State as far as. Uh, transfers. I mean, they got two Ohio State defensive ends that are transfers, uh, and uh, two very good football players. Uh, well coached by Terry Bowden. You know, they got Chuck Amato, uh, who runs the defense, a four-three defense, very similar to what we do, uh, with a few change-ups in there. Uh, but uh, very well coached, and uh, will be a challenge. It'll be a road game for us, so we get to travel to Akron on Friday and and uh, take our take our game on the road. <clears throat> so, I think that's all I got. What do you guys got for me? And, uh, typically, the MCL is something that doesn't you know, cause you to miss the entire season. Is there a torn MCL? It's a torn MCL, and um, you know, uh, again, there's obviously different ways. And you know, I'm not a doctor, but there's different ways to, to uh, deal with it. And and uh, you know, when you look at it for his sake and, and for his health, um, you know, the doctors make that call, and I think ultimately James makes that call. Uh, certainly not a coach making that call, but in his best interest. In, you know, as as a you know, as a coach and a father, um, for his best interests in his future, he needs to get it repaired now. I mean, they could brace it up for five or six weeks, and then come out of that and see how it works, and maybe we'd lose him for a half the season. But that's that's, you know, I don't think that's that's right for him as 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 a player and as you know, in his future. So um, it's best for him. Did he suggest that as possibly? No, I don't think it was suggested. I mean, you know, he had options, but he didn't suggest that. It's the doctor's given options, and, and uh, you know, I, you know, there's no question what the right thing to do was, and I think he needs to get it fixed. So, how difficult was it telling the team that news? What's that? How difficult was it telling the team that news? You know what? I, I didn't tell the team. It was difficult telling you guys. Um, you know, I didn't tell the team. I think you know, James went around, you know, after after a lift last night and told some guys. I'm sure you know the guys got to know it, but. Um, you know, I didn't go out and say that. Um, you know, I thought he'd he'd be the one to tell those kids, and we'll talk about it probably tomorrow. Um, but they'll they'll know by then. Can you lose a guy like that, though? You know, what he means on the field, off the field, and all that. I mean, is that the kind of thing that could either pull your team together, or kind of push them forward? Like, it, can, it can be whatever a coach lets it be, and and I think it'll pull us a lot closer. Man, our guys are going to step up, and and like I, like they did Saturday. I mean, it didn't matter. It was the next man up, and and um, and. You know that, that's been our model all the all the time, all year, uh, for at least the last eight months, and and whatever it's been. And we've had some, you know, some crazy crazy instances happen. You know, really since the summer when Jared went down. So <coughs> those things happen in, in college football. That's all part of it. So um, you know, it'll pull us close together. That's our job as coaches to keep it keep it that way. And, and our guy's got a lot of confidence in his other guys. Is he gonna have surgery this week? Is it yeah, probably. How is Chris James? Chris, Chris can be fine, I think. You know, he's another one of those guys that, you know, uh, left the game. Um, and we, we expect to, you know, again, it'll be a day to day, but I expect to have him uh, on Saturday. And overall, do you feel good about the depth you have at that position? Yeah, I mean, you, you know, do you wish you had the uh, ACC player of the year? <laughs> you feel a little less than, uh, than you normally would, but no doubt about it. We got guys that can make plays, and we got a great offense line that uh, uh, created some holes for really all the backs on Saturday. How is. Uh... And your talks with James, how was his Well, like I, I like I already said, I mean, you guys want to focus on James. You know, he's a great player, uh, tough, tough one. But you know, obviously he's disappointed. I mean, he, he's you know, um, uh, he'll come out he'll come out with a statement. But uh, obviously, you know, he's a guy that wants to play. I mean, that guy's a that guy's a football player. He wants to play the game, and uh, you know, if he could tape it up and go, he would. Um, but uh, that's where we are. Way ahead, way, way, way ahead. But uh, you know, I, you know, there's no no time to talk about that right now. He needs to just focus on 
uh, the issue at hand, and, and that, that'll eventually come. When you look back at the film from Saturday, what are your impressions on Chad and how he did? Chad had a good game. I mean, obviously, he maybe the you know first game jitters or whatever. And I know it's not his first game, but it's a new season and, and, and a new system. Um, you know, I think he made you know a lot of good decisions. You know, the things you don't see. Um, you know, the mental part of the game. He does a great job. Um, obviously, would like them thrown a little bit better. Threw a quick three step uh, to to those guys, and you know, so those turnovers we talk about. But uh, he's going to keep getting better every every game, and uh, it's a, it's a work in progress. Uh, what was the game day status of Daryl? Their under could have probably gone if we wanted them to. I mean, you probably saw him if you paid attention. Uh, if you weren't on your phone, I'm sure Jerry was on his phone, but uh, he was uh, he was down a pregame and, and went and could have gone, um, you know. Um, but it was one of those things where we felt good with those other guys and we didn't need to put him um, out the field, out on the field, and, and get him hurt. And uh, you know, so he'll be I think fully ready to go this week. He'll practice all week without a doubt. It was nice to be able to get the W and be able to hold back a couple of players. As you know, Tyler Boyd will be back this week, so it'll be nice to see 23 out there running around and, and Rory Blair as well. So uh, two guys that'll uh, help us a bunch. Yeah, not to belabor the point, but you know which play you got hurt on? Um, you know, I couldn't give you a play number, but it was sometime in the second quarter and didn't look as bad on yeah. tape. Huh? Yeah. 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 So it was on a carry towards their sideline, and you know, it didn't look bad on tape, but that's when it got dinged. And he felt pretty good afterwards. So. How did you like the, uh, the offensive line rotation on Saturday? You know what? What rotation? You know, it was good. It was good. You know, it was good. You know, already we kind of held a little bit early just to make sure, you know, make him feel good. You know, he really had gotten hurt a year ago to that day. Um, so it was just good for him to, you know, take it in. And then, uh, and then, you know, we rotated him into the second half. I think he played the whole second half. Didn't you, Artie? So he went the whole second half. Artie's in here. No interviews for Artie, though. Um, but, uh, you know, so it was good to you know get his feet wet and and uh, he felt good. But it was good with you know, with uh, Biz being out there and, and Bookster and and um, Brian. So we had a good rotation going and, and we could probably get a couple more guys in there as well. Do you think uh, Bookster and O'Neill? I mean, will you decide on one guy this week, or do you think you'll use both guys? We're going to use both guys. I mean, we you know, you look at the the amount of reps out there. We're going to have to rotate guys. Period. So it's good that they're able to play, move around, and and play in different positions. So. Uh, you know, we'll continue to just kind of shuffle those guys around and give guys breaks and try to play our best seven, eight players up there um, and, and rotate them through. Did that game have good or bad that uh, stick out after watching film that didn't stick out when you were watching the game live on Saturday? You know, it's amazing. Usually it does, but usually I'm calling the plays and I don't see, you know, some things uh, and you're trying to watch. But anything good or bad to stick out, you know, um, nothing that I didn't see on Saturday, really. You mentioned calling the plays. How did all that sort of Pretty good, pretty good. We had, you know, talked about the delay of games, but we <laughs> we used it. We used the timeout. We had a headphone problem, and um, so we burned a timeout. And I didn't want to burn another one on a, you know, you know, on a on a field goal or a punt. Um, so we took those delay games. Just you know, it was five yards. Figured we'd still be able to kick a field goal up through the uprights. It didn't go to a 55 yarder, but communication was good, and, and like I expected, we'd practice that in scrimmages. So that wasn't anything new for us. You don't have like, a pile of time game with depth charts. So you're not going to return punts. No, he'll be returning punts and kickoffs, and he'll do it all. What are your impressions on that from, from what you've seen on the film? You know what? You know, defensively um, speaking, you know they got two explosive defensive ends, as I said already. Uh, you know their front seven are, are are nasty. You know they came in here last year and and, and got the best of us, and um, so uh, they're pretty. They're very sound defensively. Play a lot of you know a lot of you know two shell quarters coverage, so they'll get their safeties active in the run game. And they're gonna. You know, you rush for 325 yards in the opener, uh, they'll be geared up to stop the run. But uh, we got 23 out there, and Dante's forward, and, and I think having two of those guys out there on either side, wherever they may be, maybe they're on the same side, but, uh, you know, that'll open up things a little bit. They can't pack the box too much, I don't think, with, with, with those guys out there. So, uh, but their defense is, is, you know, has been stingy. They're aggressive, they attack. Um, and, um, you know, the, the, the D tackle, Cody Grice, is a, He's an explosive guy inside, so we're going to have to control him. He's a penetrator and tries to cause havoc in the backfield. And, um, and then offensively, you know, they played a few quarterbacks. One rushed the ball for a little bit more yards than, than the other guy. And um, they really just kind of moving guys in and out at that position. So I think they're still trying to find themselves at that position. But got a very good tailback that rushed for a lot of year, yards on us last year and, and uh, some very good receivers out there. So uh, they're going to be a Baylor-type offense. I mean, they're going to spread the field. and. 
and uh, you know they'll sometimes have the receivers you know lined up on on each sideline. Um, so you know we'll have to prepare for all their splits and uh, some of their tempo. Well, when you rush for 300 yards, I mean, that's, you know, um, you know, obviously if they stuff your run game up, then obviously we got to go back out there a little bit more. But um, you know, first of all, number one thing, if you're going to run the ball, they better do do a good job blocking. They did. They sustained some blocks downfield that sprung some uh, sung some uh, blocks. As well as George Ashton played very well as a fullback, getting up and, and, and blowing people up. Um, but you know, receiver core as, as a whole did a pretty good job. We wish you know some of those 50-50 balls would have come down with. Um, but uh, you know, overall, we got to do a better job of getting him the ball. Really. Thank you for your game day evaluations. Jordan Whitehead, Pat Amara, any one of those guys show you something that you not? In, not not that we didn't see in camp. I mean, you know, um, you know, overall, I mean, there's just some little details like you know. The, the probably, you know, when you talk about disappointing things, just attention to detail. We lost the, the focus near the end, I think, of understanding why we were where we were and why we played a good first half. But, you know, Pat did some good things and some things, you know, again, with the new defense that they're learning uh, that we got to continue to learn. But both, both of them, you know, um, showed that they can play back on the hash. And, and, and also Terrace Webb as well. Don't forget about him. He, he did, a, you know, a great job playing and really uh, played very, very well at the field safety spot. So. Um, you know, we're just still trying to figure out. I mean, it's evaluation for them, for us as coaches, uh, to really see where they were on the first game, because it doesn't matter what they did in the past; it's what they did for you know for the team on Saturday. So, um, you know, we'll continue to evaluate that position, like all, just like you know, Caprera and, and, and Bam Bradley at the at the uh, the money backer spot. There, both of them played solid in there, and um, we need to continue to rotate and keep guys fresh. Pat, are you going to continue to are you going to give Peterman another? What we saw Saturday is that sort of something maybe we'll see going forward. Yeah, I think we're going to you know put him in there, and you know um, if he doesn't come in and throw a pick, probably you, you get him another series. You know, you kind of um, look at that and go, uh oh. Um, but you know, Nathan, we got a lot of confidence in Nathan. We really do, and uh, we got a lot of confidence in both those guys. So uh, maybe we should have put him back out there and gave him a second chance. You know, I think everybody deserves those. So uh, Nathan's definitely going to get another opportunity to, to go out there and and uh, show what he's got. Did you expect to have Reggie back? Um, again, I, I believe we got a chance. Um, you know, it's a, it's a day-to-day -day issue. Um, I, I can't guarantee it, uh, like I can't guarantee anybody coming back. But uh, I, I think we got a good chance of getting him back. But we'll, we'll see day-to-day. -day. We'll see how he practices too. He'll probably be there, but does he practice all week? If he doesn't practice, I don't feel good playing guys that don't practice. So we'll see. You know, if he can practice by Wednesday, we'll see where he is. You mentioned about details, attention to details of the defense. Is that what happened on the two big, big plays in the fourth quarter? Just a couple of those and just a couple, just, you know, just alignment, just perfect alignments and stuff like that. Just, I mean, little detail things like that, that maybe they forgot about how important they were. And, uh, you know, sat here last night and, and uh, talked about it. I said, did you learn something? They're like, oh, yeah, you know. Um, but they get it. So that's, that's the important thing. Yeah, Jerry, yeah, you, know, you had a question. You. Did, uh, did you, you, you and my chat come out of high school? What do you, what do you think? Yeah, Trayvon, I, you know, uh, Coach Neeby, because he's head football coach and I recruited him. I watched him on his practice field there. You know, and I guess spring drills they have. Uh, you know, obviously he was a very good football player. Uh, we did not offer Michigan State, but you know, uh, I thought he was a very good athletic quarterback. They could throw the ball down the field and and, uh, and make plays with his feet. So uh, he, he's you know, he's a good football player. You have to prepare for both guys, I guess. This week. Oh yeah, yeah, no doubt about it. We'll play, prepare for both, and, and I think we'll see both. Any final questions? Okay, coach, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.